Hello, and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover the basic commands for getting around the file system. Let's talk about the command line and what it looks like. Usually, it looks something like this. And this prompt could be customized depending on your particular distro. In this particular case, the first part of the prompt you see is the name of the user that's logged in. So in this case, it's student. And then it's followed by the at symbol. Next, we have the name of the machine. In this case, our machine is named Linux-VM. And then that's separated by a colon, followed by the path where you are currently located. In this case, it says tilde, which is a shortcut for your home directory. So basically, right now, we are in the student's user's home directory. And lastly, what you see here is the dollar sign. This indicates that the system is ready for you to type in a command. You will mostly see the dollar sign at the end of a command prompt, unless you are logged in as the root user, in which case you will see the pound symbol or hashtag. The root user is similar to the administrator on a Windows machine, where that account has more privileges to perform system level commands. The Linux file system organizes its files in a hierarchical directory structure, just like in Windows or in Mac OS. Basically, at the top of the hierarchy is the root directory, which is known as slash. All the files and directories in the file system are all under the root folder or slash. There are three major differences between the Windows file system and the Linux file systems that I want to highlight. The first thing is that Linux doesn't have a concept of a drive letter like C colon or D colon. Everything is going to be under slash or the root folder. So if you plug in a thumb drive or an external hard drive or a file share over the network, those devices are all going to be accessed within one of these subfolders. You will commonly see thumb drives under slash mnt slash usb or file shares under slash mnt slash smb. Second concept to keep in mind is that the file structure is separated by slashes. Note that this is the forward slash, not the backslash that is used in Windows. So the typical file name structure would be something like slash home, slash students, slash documents. Again, it is not the backslash. The third thing to keep in mind is that Linux is case sensitive. So within any particular location, you can have multiple files or folders that appear to have the same name. But if you look at these examples right here, these folders are all named Mickey Mouse. However, the cases are all different. This one is all lowercase. This one is all uppercase, and this one is mixed case. Because Linux is case sensitive, these are all treated as different objects. You have to be careful when you name your files. Stay consistent in terms of naming them all capital letters or all lowercase letters, or some kind of system where you know you're not going to duplicate the file names. You don't want to have an instance like this where you actually have three different versions of that same file or folder when you really only mean to have one. All right, so the first command we're going to type is pwd. pwd stands for print working directory. Once you hit the enter key, what it is going to do is come back with your current location within the file system. You start off in your home directory, so the default home folder for this user is slash home slash student. One thing to note is that home folders for all users is under slash home. The only exception is the root user himself, and root's home folder is usually in slash root. Now that we know where we're at, the next command we are going to look at is a command that will take us somewhere else. In order to go somewhere else in the file system, the command we're going to use is cd. cd stands for change directory, and what we can do is type cd space and then put the destination of where we want to go. 
let's say we want to go to the slash temp folder. We type cd space slash temp, then hit return. Notice the command prompt. We have now switched over to the slash temp folder. But like I said before, on some systems, prompt does not have the path coded in. So in order to find out where you are, you could type the pwd command. In this case, you get the slash temp. Another thing you can do with cd is you can do cd space dot dot. Dot dot is a shortcut that stands for go up one level from where you are. So if we go one level above slash temp, we are going to go into the slash folder. When we hit the enter key, you can see the reflect the path. Here is just slash in the prompt because we are in the root of the file system. If you want to verify, just type pwd and you can see that we are in slash. If we just type cd by itself without a target of where to go to, it's going to bring you back to your home folder, which is represented by the tilde. So once again, cd by itself will go to the current user's home folder. And we can verify this by looking at the command prompt where it gives us the tilde, which is the shortcut for your home folder, or we can type pwd again, which verifies that we are in fact back to the home folder. All right, so we looked at finding out where we are and how to go somewhere. Now let's take a look at the next logical thing, which is looking at the contents of a particular folder. To list out the contents, you just type ls, which is short for listing. After you hit return, it is going to tell you that we have eight files in this particular folder. And similar to cd, if we type ls followed by a location, it is going to give you the listing of that particular location. If I want to take a look at what's in the slash temp folder, you can type ls space slash temp. And I can see a whole bunch of files. In fact, there's so many files here in slash temp that the listing has scrolled off the screen. So while we're here in slash temp, let's talk about what slash temp is. Slash temp is a temporary folder, which is what TMP stands for. And it is a temporary folder that is used by the Linux system for storing temporary files. This temp folder is usually cleared out upon reboot of the system. So if you leave things in slash temp and you reboot, it'll be gone. Be aware that it's different for each distro and that you can also customize the behavior for reboots. The next thing we're going to look at is the file system. We are going to be taking a look at this top folder using the graphical interface. You'll see that there are a bunch of folders in here and this list may be a little different depending on your particular distro. For the most part, you'll see the slash bin, slash boot, slash dev, slash etsy, slash home, etc. These are all fairly consistent across most of the distros. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and go through some of the more common ones that you will see. The first one we look at is slash dev or slash dev, which is short for device. This folder usually contains all of the hardware devices that are available and connected to your system. We will do a deeper dive into those in a subsequent video. Next thing we're going to look at is a folder called slash lib or slash lib, which is short for library. This folder contains shared libraries for programs that are dynamically linked so it's similar to the DLL files on a Windows system. Most users will not need to take a look at this folder. Next thing that we are going to look at is the slash media folder. A lot of distros out there use the slash media folder to mount external devices. 
So when you plug in a thumb drive or an external hard drive, you will find access to those devices through the slash media folder. Next, we have slash MNT or slash mount. The mount folder is used for mount points, which means when you connect up a thumb drive or an external hard drive, you access those devices through this folder if you want to take a look at the logical files. This sounds very familiar to the slash media folder because a lot of distros now use the slash media folder for automated mounting and slash MNT for manual mounting. Another one you will see is the slash var folder, slash var, which stands for variable. In this folder are things that are consistently changing while the system is running. So for example, all of the system log files will be here. So if you're running a mail server, your mail uh, files will be here. If you're running a HTTP server, those log files will be here. And if you have a printer connected, those printer logs will be here. So basically all of the running logs in the systems are going to be found under the slash var folder. Now we're going to be talking about shortcuts. We learned earlier in the day that dot dot means one level up. Let's take a look at some other shortcuts. Let's start by CDing back to your own home folder. And when you do a ls dot, dot means your current folder. So what you're going to see is that it's going to list out the files in your current folder. We learned earlier that dot dot means one level up. So ls dot dot will list out the contents of the folder above our home folder, which is the slash home. And so these contain the other folders for all the other users on this machine. We also learned that tilde stands for your home folder. So if you ls of tilde, you will get the, these familiar files. With a tilde, what you can do is add a username right after it, and that means it's that user's home folder. So for example, if we do cd space tilde cane, this will take us to cane's home folder, which is slash home slash cane. If you want to go back to where you were before, you can do cd space dash. This is going to go back to your last location. In this case, it will bring us back to the student's home folder. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learn about the Linux file system and three basic commands. PWD to find out where you are, CD to change directory to another location in the file system, and ls to list out contents of a folder. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.